If you have your Bibles with you, go ahead and open them to Psalm 19. I'm going to read to you today from New Living Translation. Psalm 19 and verse 1. It reads, The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display His craftsmanship. Of course, this challenge is called God's future for you. And yet, there may be someone watching this right now who questions if God even exists. I mean, we know there are people in the world today that simply say that because they can't see God, they don't believe in God. They may even question people like me and say, how could I believe in a God that I don't see? But, you know, there are other things in this world that we don't see that we believe in. One of them is the wind. If someone were to say that they saw the wind, we know that they'd be mistaken. No, you can't see the wind, but you can see the effects of the wind. And the same thing is true concerning God. While you may not be able to see God standing in front of you, you can clearly see the effects of God all around you. And that's what Psalm 19 is teaching. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies are his workmanship. Uh, clearly, everything in this world has been designed. And common sense says that if something has been designed, then there must have been a designer. Someone once said, once said, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. And I understand that statement because if you just look at how this world is made, uh, you look at the fact that if the earth were just a little closer to the sun, it'd be too hot for us to live here. If it were just a little farther away, it'd be too cold for us to live here. If you look at the fact that there are no two people with the same fingerprints, if you look at all these details that so many of us know so well, it's obvious that this didn't happen by accident. You didn't happen by accident. God created the world and God created you and he has an incredible future planned for you. I want you to go to Jeremiah chapter 29 as well. And we're going to read a scripture that's going to reveal to you a little bit more about the future that God has for you. Jeremiah 29, and I'm going to read to you, I'm, and once again, I'm going to use the New Living Translation. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. God has a future for you, and it's a future that is a good future. It's a future, frankly, that's amazing. And if we look throughout the Bible, uh, there are a number of people in the Bible that God had a future for. People that seemed like they were nobodies. People who, in some cases, had a pretty bad past, but God had a future for them. Of course, we can start by just thinking about Abram in Genesis chapter 11 and 12. Abram, as we know him now as Abraham, was just a moon worshiper. He was just another guy. But God appeared to him, and God told him that if he would do what God said, he would follow God's instructions, he'd be a blessed man, he'd be famous, he'd be someone God would use to help change the whole world, ultimately by introdu introducing Jesus through his family. And those things happen. We're talking about Abraham today, and Jesus did come from the lineage of Abraham. God had a future for him. There was a boy that the Bible teaches became a slave. He was 17 years old and his brothers sold him into slavery. His name was Joseph. But God had showed, shown him that one day he would be a ruler, even over his family. And although he was a slave and eventually lied on and thrown into prison, God caused him to go from the jailhouse to the penthouse in a sense. He became number two in a nation that wasn't even his own, and his family came one day and bowed down to him. God had a future for Joseph, and God has a future for you. There was a, man, a young man by the name of David who, uh, when we find him in the Bible, was just taking care of his daddy's sheep. But God had a future for him to be the greatest king that Israel had ever known. And if you know anything about the story of David, you know God used him to defeat Goliath. God helped him to escape from King Saul. God made him a great king. Uh, the Bible teaches us about a man by the name of Peter. Peter was someone who was just a fisherman. And when he did follow Jesus, he, did get, he got to the place where he actually denied Jesus three times, cussed while he was doing it. But God had a future for him. Jesus said, I prayed for you so your faith won't fail. And the Bible teaches us that Peter became the leader of the church and that the power of God was on him so strong that people tried to get close to him because when people would get close to him, 
they would get healed of whatever ailment was in their bodies, just like they did when they were close to Jesus. And then there was a guy by the name of Paul. The Bible teaches us that he was an evil guy. I mean, he was someone that persecuted Christians. He was someone that was there when they were killed. He was someone that hated God's people. And he didn't know that that's what he was doing, but that's what he was doing, hating God's people. But Jesus appeared to him and said, why are you fighting against me? Why are you kicking against the pricks? And then told him the future that God had for him. And he became what many call the greatest apostle. Well, you may say, well, you know, those are all Bible characters. And, you know, they, have, they, they may have done some bad things, but nothing like what I've done. But, you know, I came across something on Facebook and somebody posted it. I'm going to use it. They, they, they said this, that Jacob was a cheater. David had an affair, Noah got drunk, Paul was a murderer, Jonah ran from God, Gideon was insecure, Mir Miriam was a gossip, Mary was a warrior, uh, Thomas was a doubter, Sarah was impatient, Elijah was moody, Moses stuttered, Zacchaeus was short, Abraham was old, and Lazarus was dead. If God used them, what makes you think God can't use you? Listen, whatever your past is, God still has a future for you, and it's a good one. It's an amazing one. You just have to choose to follow him, to walk with him. And I want to help you with that today. So go to Exodus chapter 33. And I want to talk about one of these individuals that God had a future for. His name is Moses. Now, if you know anything about Moses, Moses was born in a, a terrible time. His people were slaves. And uh, the, the king of Egypt, he was called Pharaoh, decided he didn't want any more uh, Hebrew boys born. So he put out a decree. He forced uh, the, the, the Egyptian people, uh, frankly, he caused all boys born to the Israeli women to be murdered, to be killed. And Moses' mother, of course, gave birth to Moses, and she didn't want that for her son. And so the Bible teaches us that there are a few things that she did to try to save Moses, ultimately putting him in a basket, putting him uh, in, in the water, hoping that he would escape the same fate that so many others were having. But God moved on, on Moses' behalf. It just so happened that Pharaoh's daughter happened to discover Moses in that basket, and she immediately became attached to him, and she decided to keep him. And Moses was raised as Pharaoh's grandson. Now remember, he's an Israeli, he's a Hebrew boy, and and. Pharaoh decided he wanted them all killed, but God had such a plan for Moses that he worked things out so that Moses would be raised in a privileged position. The Bible reveals to us that indeed he could have partaken of all the pleasures of sin. In other words, he, he was able to enjoy life as a prince of Egypt. But God had a destiny for Moses, and apparently this started to stir up on the inside of him. And one day he goes out to just look at the fate of his brethren, the Israeli people. And uh, one of them, missed, one of the Egyptian slave drivers or slave owners mistreated one of those Israelis. And Moses, because in him was to be a deliverer, that's the future God had for him, stepped in and ended up killing that Egyptian. He tried to hide it, found out that he couldn't, had to run for his life. But, and, 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 and of course, that wasn't the end of the story. But I want you to notice that even though Moses was in a great position, God still had a plan for him and he knew it. I don't know what, what your life is like now. Maybe, you know, it's, it's like Moses' was and things are great. Maybe you have fame and fortune uh, and, and you're happy with where things are, you think, right now. Maybe your life has been terrible and you're struggling to come up with something good that's happened, actually happened to you. You can't even think of much. Whatever it is, God, I believe that as you're listening to this, as you're watching this, God's dealing with you. He's stirring up on the inside of you uh, a realization that he has a destiny for you. And that it's time for you to step into his destiny, into his future for you, because it's so much better than anything you have now and anything that you can create for yourself. Well, if you, you continue to follow the story of Moses, you know that he was on the backside of the desert somewhere and God spoke to him through a burning bush. And I just might be your burning bush today. God let him know what God called him to do. He was to be a deliverer and God gave him instructions. So he, of course, went back to Egypt with his brother Aaron. He had help. And he went before Pharaoh and he said, let my people go. And we know Pharaoh wouldn't do that. So God told Pharaoh through Moses that there were going to be 10 plagues that will come on Egypt. And God spoke to Moses and told him what to do in every single situation so that those plagues would come on Egypt and Israel would be protected. And the bottom line is, by the time God got done, Israel was brought out of that 
uh, that, that Egyptian bondage out of slavery, and Moses was the one that God caused to do that or used to do that. I, I'm going to read to you Exodus 33 and verse 11 because I want to end with this point. I'm going to read to you from just the King James Version, and it simply says, The Lord spake to Moses face to face as a man speaketh to his friend. What was Moses' secret? What was it that helped him to uh, be used by God when he was facing Pharaoh, which, you know, had to be tough? Uh, when, when, when it was time to, when he was facing the people of Israel, when he brought them out of, uh, of Egypt, the Bible says they went in the wilderness. They couldn't find any water. They couldn't find any food. Uh, there were a lot of challenges that they faced. But Moses always seemed to do the right thing. When he faced Pharaoh, he would say the right thing. He always did what God said that caused Israel to be protected from plagues. When he got into the wilderness, water came from a rock. Manna fell from heaven. You know, God, was, God used him to, to uh, speak his words to those people. God used him to get victory, to have victory over his enemies in battle. What was his secret? Well, verse 11 showed us his secret. God spoke to him face to face. Moses had a lifestyle of walking with God. And the first step that you've got to take, the first element of the future God has for you is that you'll have a future where you'll walk with God. Not only is walking with God enjoyable, not only will you be fulfilled because he's really the source of all true joy, but you'll find that when you walk with God, God will be able to give you the direction that you need so that you're successful in every area of life. Walking with God, though, is not just visiting God on Sunday on, by coming to church. It's not just calling out his name when I'm in the midst of trouble. Walking with God is a lifestyle. So I want to challenge you today to take a step up in your walk with God. If you've never received Jesus, begin to do it today. If you've gotten away from him, come back to him today. If you're supposedly living for him, live even closer to him. Make your walk with God, being a Christian, a lifestyle and not just a title, and you'll begin to experience the future God has for you. I hope what you heard today really helped you. And I want to encourage you as you discuss the questions that you're about to get into as a group, that you pay attention to the action steps that we've given you. The Bible says that it's the person that's a doer of the word that's actually blessed in their doing. So I wanna encourage you not just to hear what you've heard today, but to actually do what the Bible says. It's then that you'll see how amazing your life can really be. And by the way, take a moment and think about who in your life could benefit from this discussion, from this study and make sure that you invite them and bring them next week. God loves you, and God has a future for you.